Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Today I'm at Bespoke Sports Car Hire's Supercar Day. This is a pretty special opportunity where we get to take a number of cars out, test drive them on the road. So we've got 150 miles driving in some very cool machinery. So let's take a quick look at all of the cars that are going to be available to us today. We're going to go first in the TVR Sagaris, then we've got the Ferrari F430 Spider, Lamborghini Gallardo LP560 Spider, Aston Martin DBS, McLaren MP412C, Porsche 997 Turbo Cabriolet, Lotus Exige S, and the Maserati Gran Cabrio MC Shift. So we're going to go for a quick drive in each of the cars throughout the day. It's going to be a pretty awesome experience, and this is a day that is open for everyone to attend over 28. And I'll put the link down below and all the details about it so you can check it out and also follow Bespokes on the social media platforms. First up though, we need to head in for a briefing. All right, so briefing done. I'm team seven, so I'm first going to be driving the TVR Sigaris. So let's head out to the cars. Here we are then, drivers in the cars and heading out, and we're going to be going first in the TVR Sagaris. Four litre straight six, five speed manual, not much by way of car aid, so it's all about the driving. To open the car, you press this button, and the door opens. This is going to be fun. Here we are then, TBR Sagaris, the adventure starts here. Let's go. Well, there's no question this is immediately a pretty poor experience. I've never driven a TBR before. The noise alone is absolutely fantastic though, just a quick little blip. It's got exactly what you think, a pretty awkward seating position. Flip the downshifts. This is really quite cool. Sagaris was built between 2005 and 2006, sort of derived from the T350C, so uh, not for long, and there aren't very many of them. But it's pretty, pretty wild looking. It's just unusual in the way everything works. You know, the door opens with a button here, you've got the windows up and down from a switch here. It's an excuse to put the window down. <laughs> that sounds so awesome. Pretty cool colour too. This is uh, this is going to be a fun little drive, I think. All right then, time to give in some revs. So cool. you hear everything and you feel everything. Proper, proper, awesome motoring. We've got a little tunnel. This is going to be fun. <laughs> I love the noise. It is so raspy and unlike like anything else. That's what TBRs are all about. Loved the quirks of the TBR Sagaris, but my next bespoke car is going to be the Lotus Exige S. 220 brake horsepower, 1.8 litre supercharged inline four and a six speed manual. Let's jump in. So the first problem with this car is getting in this side sill. It's seriously awkward, but we're in. Right, so we've got a six-speed manual. Do the immobilizer, key in, start button. Awesome noise. This car weighs just 933 kilos. That is absolutely nothing, and it's a full track experience. You can see we've got the racing harnesses. If I can get myself in here, here we go. Wow. Oops. <laughs> there we go. All right, I'm in, finally. Never driven a car like this before. So far, I am absolutely loving it. 
dubbing this. The noises it makes are so awesome. You've got that little like backfire every time you lift off the accelerator. Oh, this is awesome. The race car for the road. I've never driven uh, an Exegias. I don't think I've actually driven a sort of a Lotus at all, really. Um, but this is this is really quite fun. The TVR before was good too. I'm following it now. But uh, it's exactly the point of a day like today. You get to experience all these different cars. And, uh, I'm only two in, but I'm absolutely loving it. And a decent road to give it a go. never have considered like a car I would want but <laughs> just fun just fun more tunnels <laughs> it is just a little race car for the road steering is awesome Acceleration braking, it's all awesome. Really enjoyed the drive in the Exiges. I have to go and try the new V6 now. I think I'd absolutely love it. But everybody's just gathering here for driver swap number three, and we're going to be jumping into the Lamborghini Gallardo LP560 Spider. I'm pretty familiar with the car because it's very similar to the R8 V10 I used to drive. It has an E gear gearbox, flappy paddles, 560 horsepower, all wheel drive, and looks absolutely awesome. So, looking forward to this, let's jump in the Gallardo! So here we are in the Lamborghini LP560 running in completely normal mode and this is where it is way too quiet, you have to hit the sport button. There we go, get the valves open. Get those absolutely insane V10 downshifts. And a bit of that, which is absolutely epic. Nothing beats the downshift flips of a naturally aspirated V10. So just for fun, I'm going to put it in Corsa mode. Car lets me know. This gets really violent. a kick in the back from the gear shifts. It's even more violent if you go in a Super or Performante, the LP570 variant, but that's quite a kick. I think I'm going to revert back to Sport. Corsa is quite harsh. So we're back in Sport mode. Still get a lot of the noise without the exceptionally violent um, upshifts. Honestly, those downshifts alone on this car make it. It's absolutely amazing. I mean, there's no question with the newer gearbox, like in the Hurricane, which I also drove recently, it's a much, much cleaner car. You can drive it without the sort of discomfort you get from the semi-auto. But I personally quite like that you have some engagement. You still have to fluctuate the throttle and get it right. Sort of a mix between a manual and a, and a double clutch, if you will. I mean, there's there's no question the double clutches are better, but you can enjoy this kind of gearbox if you know what you're doing and you sort of think about it. Back from the LP560, then as fun as ever. I really do like driving those. The noise is awesome. But now it's time for the technically competitor to the Gallardo, the same generation, the Ferrari F430 Spider. So this one's a, uh, well, 430 comes from its 4.3 litre. Uh, it's a V8 um, rather than the V10 in the Gallardo. We've got the F1 paddle shift system and uh, the noise these cars make is really quite cool. I haven't actually driven a 430 oh, since maybe four years or so now. The last time I drove one was actually when I was shopping around for my V8 Vantage. Um, so it'll be nice to uh, get back. Don't seem to spend very much time driving Ferraris, but let's jump in for bespoke car number four. Here we are in the 430 then, and it's an interesting car because it was actually the one that I used to have on posters on my walls when I was learning to drive. It's that sort of age, I suppose. It's been replaced by the 458, of course, which is leagues ahead in terms of how it drives. I mean, the 
gearbox, for example, here. It's a little bit better than the Lambo one, but it's still pretty clunky. So it's, you know, semi-automatic paddle shift. You can turn off auto and have it back in on manual mode on the paddles. And that's where the car comes into its own, because the noise of this V8 is absolutely amazing. Just listen. noise is this and then you're in the Ferrari so, you know you've got that whole sort of feel of excitement that just comes with driving a Ferrari because everybody wants to Manatino start stop engine button the whole look and feel Rosso red and creamer interior that's what it's all about and it's, it's pretty cool from the 4.30 then, the cars are being lined up here for a photo shoot which is looking pretty cool around me. Uh, we've got these uh, route books as well, uh, guides making sure we know exactly what's going on. That's the Grand Cabrio just being parked up next to the 4.30. But it is fascinating being able to drive so many different cars on one day and make comparisons and get that experience. Really enjoying it. 4.30 wasn't everything, wasn't quite everything I sort of hoped, but good to uh, take it out and have a really proper drive. But uh, yeah, looking forward to uh, just grabbing a bite to eat in this pub and then uh, get ready for the afternoon run as well and it's fantastic that the sun's come out too. Really nice day now. Lunch down and everyone is jumping back into their cars. Next up we're going to be in the McLaren 12C, obviously a, a car I know pretty well but we'll go for a drive anyway, see if there are any differences between this one and mine. It doesn't have the sports exhaust so I think that's going to be the biggest thing but uh, looking forward to this afternoon. Let's jump in. Well, contrary to my earlier beliefs, I'm pretty sure this car does have the sports exhaust. It sounds exactly the same as mine. It's uh, actually kind of weird driving a car that is identical, but not my one. Um, feel right at home, obviously, absolutely love it. What else do I need to say? It's the 12C and the 650S, obviously, even more so, is awesome. As always, we know all about that, and now we're in the Porsche 911 997 Turbo Cabriolet. So it's going to be a bit windier when we're moving at speed, because obviously we've got all of the openness and uh, not a spider, so we've got 2 plus 2, we've got some, some sort of attempt at back seats. Um, automatic gearbox, all-wheel drive. It sort of squirts a bit to get going. Um, a bit strange really. It's a little bit windy in here, I'll speak up so I hope you can hear me. I've never really been a massive fan of the 997 generation. Um, I feel like the steering wheel is a little bit small and skimpy and I don't really like it that that much. And that's like the main thing in a car because it's what you're feeling and it's your input into it. Um, there's no question these things are fast, they pull off the line hilariously quickly. Um, and I guess it's pretty practical and you can probably rely on it quite a lot just doesn't really do it for me in the looks and feel department and I guess a lot of driving a car is the emotion you get from it. Um, I mean I love the special edition kind of cars, I love the 997 GT3 RS, friends got one and that is absolutely awesome, do friends have them actually, um, 4 litres Carrera GTs, 918 Spider, but the 997 is not for me, not, not the, uh, the car of choice. Not going to beat around the bush, I was not best impressed with the 911 Turbo Cab. It just takes ages to get moving, it's a five-speed auto box, it's just a little bit 
I just didn't like it. That's why you drive these things, I suppose. But next up is by far the best looking and probably the best sounding car here, the Aston Martin at DBS. When I had a V8 Vantage a couple of years ago, I actually thought at the time I might have wanted a DBS. But even to this day, I am yet to drive one. So uh, quite looking forward to this, actually. I've got this and then I'm going to be driving the Grand Cabrio afterwards. But uh, DBS probably one of the, uh, yeah, the most exciting ones. So let's go, let's go for a drive. We're inside the DBS. One of the best bits with an Aston is always the crystal key. It's very, very nice. And then the second best bit is that the V12, six liter V12. So it's absolutely immense. We've got a manual gearbox in here too. Just waiting for the other guys and then we'll get on the way. DBS is more or less exactly what it says on the tin, it's James Bond's Aston. One of the coolest things though is how much torque it has, like from 20 miles an hour, third gear, I know that'd be fine in any car, but it just pulls away so unbelievably easy. The road's clear behind me, so I'm just gonna slow down a little bit more actually. Put it into maybe fifth or something, back at 20, and it still pulls away. <laughs> like, how does a car, oh, it's, it's torque isn't it, but it's, it's really easy and forgiving to drive, so it's, it's a GT car, so you can properly, properly just chill out. The seats are comfortable, the road position is comfortable, and you're driving one of the best looking Aston Martins ever. Um, it's, it's pretty good. I quite like it. Under a little bridge. Car resist sounds absolutely awesome. Driving the DVS done, and I can certainly say that that is a proper tour car, very gentle and relaxed. But now it's time for the final drive of the day, number eight, in the Maserati Grand Cabrio Sport MC Shift. So the Sport with the new front bumper and the MC Shift. Really random thing about Maseratis that I love on the new ones. Maserati in the headlight there, awesome. And they sound absolutely immense. V8, of course. So everybody just getting ready for the final stint now, back towards the hotel. Okay, with the Grand Cab, I was straight into sport mode. Quite frankly, this car sounds so good, you need the valves open. It's absolutely heavenly. It's one of the best sounding V8s I think there is. I mean, the Gran Turismo's have always sound good, and I guess this is one of the, the latest versions. Pretty immense, you can see four people in here, which is one of the coolest things in my mind about the Grand Cabrio. You know, the guys in the back, actually have leg space. Uh, you don't get much boot, that's where you sacrifice. But hey, it's convertible, it's nice. Let's see how it drives. I can't help but feel I'd be right at home in Monaco with this car. Um, a while back I used to have an Audi S5 convertible and at the time I really wanted the Grand Cabrio when it came out because um, I mean it was a sort of bigger version of the same car, I guess four seats goes pretty well, comfortable, luxurious, um, with a little bit more style, although probably less good electrical and tech than the S5 had. Um, it's Audi, of course, they have brilliant, brilliant stuff in their cars. But uh, this certainly does sound the absolute business. And it's pretty nice actually driving across the uh, countryside roads here as well. Uh, it's very uh, gentle ride, easy steering. It's quite a nice downshift too. It's, it's more a sort of a, a snap to the gear rather than the same uh, <laughs> the same um, sort of thing as like the uh, Gallardo or the 430, for example. It's also worth mentioning, it's an awful lot less windy than the Porsche was, which I guess is a two plus two, but similarly a very open car. But then uh, as a four seater, it's also a car that can do this. It's just cool. <laughs> Nothing like a good bit of tunnel, eh? We're back.
back where it all started then. The Maserati, a pretty good car for the last drive back into London, relaxing. Sounds absolutely awesome on the Maserati too. That V8 is mega. But uh, what a crazy day with Bespokes here, driving eight different cars in one day. From the TVR at the beginning, it was just fun. And I'm glad I finally driven a TVR. Then the Lotus after that, that was quite frankly the biggest surprise of the day for me. Um, I didn't really know what to expect with the Lotus, but uh, it's crazy that like almost the cheapest car here can be the most fun, but that's because it's so small for the British country roads we've got. Then through everything else, I've got to try and remember the order here. We have the Gallardo up next, pretty much know what that's about, the 430 after that. Then the 12C, we know all about the 12C. Then what did I drive after the 12C? The Porsche, I didn't particularly gel with the Porsche as you heard earlier. And then finally the DBS, love the DBS, looks amazing, sounds brilliant. And uh, then, uh, sorry, then finally the Maserati. So uh, absolutely amazing day, what an experience to be able to drive so many different cars, those two just tucked over there, all at once and sort of make a, be able to make the comparisons. You get so much more out of it, you can sort of see what's different about each car and um, well, not only do you get to make the comparisons but you also get to get behind the wheel of so many different types of cars and uh, that is an absolutely brilliant day. So uh, yeah, a big thanks to uh, Bespoke Sports Car Hire for their supercar day because uh, it's been great and it's only £625 plus fat as well so uh, it's uh, well worth the shot if you're ever able to uh, check that out and uh, starting here from North London heading around the British countryside uh, yeah like I say hope you've enjoyed the video seeing all of those different cars up to one adventure it's been absolutely brilliant make sure you head over to Bespokes their uh, social media links will be down below to their Facebook page Instagram and Twitter and uh, check them out because they've got some pretty cool stuff and some rather special offers coming up too so you're going to want to see all of that anyway back here now cars are all just getting ready to head off Porsche going first it's been an absolutely brilliant day hope you've enjoyed the coverage that's it for right now I will catch up with you again very soon cheers